During their visit to Colombia, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle engaged with young people and government leaders to advocate for stronger safeguards in digital spaces, especially in support of young users. The couple's speech and various engagements during the tour highlighted the need for a healthier relationship between children and technology, addressing concerns such as cyberbullying, digital addiction, and misinformation that can adversely impact mental health. They began their visit with a welcome from Colombia's Vice President, Francia Marquez, a prominent advocate for human rights and youth empowerment, who highlighted the global relevance of online safety and cyberbullying as issues affecting societies worldwide. Marquez expressed admiration for the Sussex's advocacy and their commitment to addressing these shared challenges, particularly the mental health struggles young people face when interacting with digital spaces. Through Archwell, their non-profit foundation, Harry and Meghan have supported initiatives that promote responsible technology, foster digital literacy, and encourage youth resilience amid the pressures of the digital age. One of the key moments in their visit took place at a local school where um, Meghan and Harry spoke directly with students about the influence of technology on their daily lives. Meghan urged them to prioritise self-reliance over tech-reliance, underscoring the importance of building self-confidence and emotional strength independently of online validation. She praised the students for their awareness and understanding of these issues, pointing out how significant it is for youth to be mindful of the effects of their digital habits on their well-being. The couple emphasised that while technology can offer incredible tools for learning and connection, it also carries risks that require careful management and awareness. The Sussex's mission to promote online safety in Colombia aligns with their ongoing global work on digital issues. Archwell has previously collaborated with organisations to address online hate and harassment, advocating for tech companies and lawmakers to implement policies that protect vulnerable users. For example, the Sussexes have campaigned for accountability among social media companies and have encouraged technology leaders to prioritise ethical design, which considers the mental health implications of prolonged digital exposure, particularly for younger users. In a joint interview prior to their visit, they expressed hope that global societies can work towards a shared goal of creating a safer, more supportive online environment, one that values young people's mental health and well-being above commercial interests. In Colombia, they also participated in events with cultural leaders and performed outreach with um, the Afro-Colombian youth communities to address the intersection of digital safety, social justice and mental health. These interactions were intended to bring attention to how marginalised communities experience unique digital challenges, such as targeted online harassment or exclusion from protective policies in digital spaces. By meeting with young Colombians, particularly those from underrepresented backgrounds, Harry and Meghan hope to amplify youth voices on the issue and encourage a cultural shift that places online safety and responsible tech use at the forefront of discussions on public health and education. In essence, Harry and Meghan's advocacy in Colombia reflects their broader mission to make digital spaces safer and more inclusive. Their efforts to promote online safety draw on a vision that seeks not only regulatory reform, but also a cultural shift toward mindful technology use, particularly for young people whose mental health can be shaped significantly by their digital environments. The recent Dispatches documentary has triggered a significant public response by exposing King Charles and Prince William's financial gains from charitable institutions, hospitals, schools, and even life-saving services. Among the most controversial details was the revelation that the RNLI, a charity devoted to rescuing those in peril at sea, must pay fees to royal estates just to launch lifeboats from beaches owned by the Crown. The RNLI's work is critical, often mobilising boats in rough seas and adverse weather to save lives. Yet, they're expected to divert their limited resources to cover fees every time they launch from certain beaches, funds that could otherwise purchase equipment or training for their volunteers. By placing this financial burden on the RNLI, the royals are effectively demanding rent 
for allowing life-saving missions to proceed, implying that without this payment, they would deny a pathway for rescues. This is indeed a very dark revelation about this monarchy. The question is, what if the RNLI didn't pay the rent? Would the monarchy then refuse to allow them to launch boats and therefore forcibly stop the saving of people's lives in peril at sea? How low can you go? It is no surprise to see so many people online label this as absolutely disgusting behaviour from a monarchy that is quite possibly the richest organisation in the world that really doesn't need any extra money. In fact, they have so much money they should be giving much of it away, not taking it from working people's wages, profiting from hospitals, schools and charities that they claim to support, and especially not charging lifeboats to launch into the sea to save people's lives. For a monarchy that often speaks of duty and public service, this practice undercuts the image they project, positioning them as prioritising profit over human life. The RNLI, an essential service that relies heavily on public donations and volunteers, is paradoxically expected to support the wealth of those who are some of the wealthiest in the country. This situation speaks to a troubling discrepancy in values. On one hand, the RNLI is willing to risk lives to save others, while on the other, the monarchy demands money for access to its lands, even for life-saving missions. This kind of revelation has fueled renewed discussions about the monarchy's role, with critics questioning why it is acceptable for a family worth billions to levy fees on charities dedicated to saving lives. For the public, this issue touches a nerve, as it highlights the deep divide between the everyday struggles of charitable organisations and the wealth preserved by the monarchy, no matter the human cost. The documentary's findings have sparked calls for reform, with growing numbers calling for the monarchy to reconsider policies that force essential charities to shoulder costs, simply to conduct life-saving work. After the recent dispatches expose about William and Charles making money from the NHS, schools, the army, and charities they claim to support, I thought I would take a look at the responses to one of the claims that says the NHS will be paying King Charles 11 million to park ambulances. What is the public reaction to this? Here are some of the replies to this tweet. Thieves. NHS reforms are turning into a cash cow for royals and business interests. Reforms will result in less healthcare. We need to stop pretending these leeches are a benefit to us. We know the castles that bring in the most tourists are in countries without monarchies. We can have a head of state who is asterisk, not asterisk, above the law with as much or more soft power influence than those grifters. Still can't get over this one. One of the most jaw-dropping grifts on dispatches uncovered is King Charles actually asterisk charging Asterisk, the lifeboat charity, to launch lifeboats. Charging volunteers, risking their lives to save others and then smiling for the cameras, their patron. It is ruthless, obscene. Not to mention all the charities who could really use those millions of pounds. Disgraceful. Change the tax laws to make them pay the same as the rest of society. How can they, in this day and age, claim ownership of the coastline? Add to that, taking monies from people's estates when they die without a will, when they are living in duchy properties. I don't suppose King can believe they're still getting away with this barefaced robbery. This documentary has opened a lot of eyes and strengthened the Republic cause. If the royals aren't ashamed, they really should be. No more fancy dress parties. I am done with the royals. They are nothing but greedy scroungers. It is sickening. Thieving parasites who do next to nothing to fleece his own country. Handed down over many centuries, it's an insight into their greed, their power, etc. Dot and we have serfs bowing to this piece of shit. Not my king, never will be. We don't need a monarchy that takes from the poorer. We all pay more, so they don't have to. So, the government are giving millions of taxpayers money to the NHS, and the royal family are taking it. Scroungers! We're finding out in 2024, but let's not forget that they've been doing it for decades. 
During various crashes, during austerity, during the cost of living, they've been milking money out of us. It's a greed that is beyond comprehension. Watch Channel 4 dispatches, the king, the prince, and their secret money, making money from the military, NHS, charities. Oh, and so the environment. Can't believe the NHS is being charged £11 million to rent a warehouse from the royal family with a 67% rent hike. Insane. Great reporting, this needs more attention. And all we do every year is plough more and more money into NHS. This is disgraceful, treason, disgusting, shocking, but not surprising, just thievery. All of them talk one way, walk another. It's the CEO, thesauruses all use it, especially the 1% of world that owns more than rest put together. Quite canny, the greedy and evil, but people criticize the younger son who doesn't cost us a penny. Shameful profiteering by monarchy. This just reinforces why I'm anti the monarchy. There should be no place for it in our modern British society. This is definitely a mafia family, and now they are exposed. While Charlie Windsor was receiving his super expensive private cancer treatment that isn't available to you, he was charging the NHS £11 million to park ambulances on his land. Meanwhile, millions of taxpayers remain on waiting lists for cancer treatment. Oh, wow. King Charles and Prince William's property empires are taking millions of pounds from cash-strapped charities and public services, including the NHS, state schools and prisons, according to a new investigation, according to The Guardian. This is globalist-driven propaganda. They are going after farmers. And the king is the biggest landowner. See it now?